Morning VC, Steve Witty reporting here, more latest finds. Um, this one will be a bit of a quick video, um, not much to purchase, though a couple of interesting items I did manage to pick up. Um, again, reasonably cheap, um, I think I'm going to pay no more than five or five pounds for anything, so I hope you've had a good week, um, my week off has been great, um, I'm all refreshed, back to work tomorrow. Oh well, yeah, you know, it's not the end of the world, you know, got to earn a cross to pay for these records. So let's start off. First record I picked up, and I picked up a couple of albums by this band, Bootown Rats, their debut album, from 1977, produced by Robert John Lang, um, Mutt Lang, as it became to be known. And that's probably how he first came to prominence, is by producing, by producing this band. Um, Singles on here, looking after number one, Mary of the Fourth Born. Um, a good strong debut actually, and even though I don't really consider them to be punk in any way, I can see why they went in there, because there's a lot of attitude in this record. A lot of, a lot of, um, it sounded fresh to what was going on at the time. Um, on the Ensign label, not an original copy, I think this is a reissue. Um, White M sign label, uh, but nonetheless, nonetheless, a good album, I'll say. And also, for a pound, I managed to pick up a copy of their third album, The Fine Art of Servicing. Um, came out in 1979. This is when the band was at the peak again on the M sign label. Really good copy, um, plays really well. Um, big single up here is I Don't Like Mondays. Um, which was number one in 1979 for four weeks. Um, if you don't know the story, is that apparently a schoolgirl went on a shooting spree, I think in San Diego, and when she was captured, she asked why she did it, and she just turned around and said, I don't, don't like Mondays, and that's where he got used that frame for his song. Um, you've also got Someone's Looking At You, and a single that wasn't as big, but I, thought, I think it's one of the best things they ever did. Diamond Smiles is a great song. It's a good album, actually. They were at the peak at this time. Um, uh, within a couple of years, they would, would be, have difficulty set, uh, selling records. Um, this was the last album they made for Enzyme. They went on to go, join uh, Sign for Mercury. And I suppose with expectations, um, it sort of, sort of fell apart a little bit. Twelve inch single I've managed to pick up for pennies. This is the emotions, flowers, and it's title track from there. Flowers LP. In a way, this twelve inch single but I like sometimes why well, they can be a bit of a waste of time. On the A side, you've just got two tracks. You've got the A side. There's flowers for about four minutes long. On the B side, you've got you've got the right to know. And there's, oh, I don't know if you can see that, there's more fade out than there is actual things cut into the record. Um, seems a heck of a waste of iron on If you think for a 12 inch, you could at least put another tr another track on there on the B side. Um, so, um, I'm not surprised that this has ended up getting this for pennies. This is probably the one I've spent the most on. This is Foreigner, their debut album, uh, Foreigner. Five pounds, it cost me, and while well, I was in the disc feed, it got a whole load of bunch. And I thought, well, I ain't going to go mad. Though I would, I would have done if I had the funds to have done it. Um, original copy. Um, yeah, really, the band uh, that was set up, fronted by Mick Jones and Ian McDonald, really, at that time. Ian McDonald, the ex of King, King Crimson, Crimson, sorry. Nick Jones, X of Spooky Tooth, um, Dennis Elliott, uh, who used to be a part of the Robinson Hunter band. Uh, they've all ended up living in the States. Um, Cootie Lou Graham on vocals, I think, who probably made the band. I think he did, you know, his strong vocals. And then the rest of the band was made up of Al Greenwood on keyboards and Ed Gaglari on bass. Um, it's not a good album, actually. It's Quite different to what else coming. I think Star Rider 
you know, I don't think it would have appeared on the later Foreign Man albums. But it feels like the first time Cold as Ice, that's the Cold as Ice the song that introduced me to Foreigner, and then Long Long Away From Home. Um, yeah, it's a, I think a good, strong de debut album. And sort of then we see what how it follows up. Follows up. Twelve inch single I picked up for, for yeah for pennies. This is Frank Rachel. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Um, in comparison to the other to our twelve inch single, this one goes on forever on the, on the A side. But, and then you've got Suffer their version. Frankie goes to Hollywood's version of Suffragette City. And I don't and don't lose what's left of your little mind. Those are your three tracks. Um, second, it came for really from the second album in Liverpool, and by the time the cracks had fallen in, it was such a big band in 1984, and it was never going to be able to follow up when Liverpool came out in 1986. It's an album I haven't got, to be honest. I was in Swordfish Records in Birmingham and came across not one but two albums by the band The Jam. This, the Modern World's their second album, uh, probably the weakest of their albums. Um, they had the big hit with All Around the World, and I think it, it, it struggled to follow. I think, if I remember rightly, uh, Paul Weller um, it was, in, it was, it was in a relationship, and I think his eye has been taken off with songwriting. His songwriting isn't, uh, in the, it isn't really a strong as it wasn't in, in the in the city album and how it led later to develop. I think this is more of a, a, a it's just a typical second album really. Something you struggle, you know, as I've mentioned before, you have a right lifetime to write your first album and then about a year to try and come in songs for, for the second album. Um Here Comes the Weekend uh, London oh, they're, 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 they're not it's not a bad album, it's just not one of their best albums. Um it used to the property of Birmingham City Library. It's got here discard, so and, you know, somebody bought it and then decided to sell it off. Next, another jam album again, three cut up band. It used to belong to Birmingham City Libraries. It's the fourth album set in Sons, and this is probably their big breakthrough album. Um, you've got Girl on the Phone, the Spig Single Teeth from Rifles, Smithers Jones and Orchestral Versions on there, um, Vickers Fees. It's, and then could do a cover of Heat Way. It's such a strong album. Um, I think Paul Weller was really fine in the chops. And you know, when he turned to 1980, uh, suddenly the, the Jam were the biggest band in the UK. Um, maybe, you know, with the pressures that brought. But you know, I'm pleased they've got that fame. Those two albums. For a band, The Bells, Night, 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 Night Birds. And this is the album that's got Lady Marmalade. This is why I brought it, because I know the songs. I didn't really know anything else. Again, on the Epic, released on the Epic label. Original copy. It's in, it's in good nick. Um, plays well. It's a good album. Um, obviously, like, uh, Lady Marmalade is the standout track. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, if you have a look at the cover, See that you know, it's very dressed as the time of the glam bit thing to it. Uh, and I, I, I liked Are You Lonely? Uh, Four Girl Bands are good, and you turn me on. It's a really good album. You, if you find a copy of it, you should, you should be able to get it for peanuts. It's worth picking up. This is where I had my lucky break while I was in the discovery. This has been one album I've been trying to find. And find the only other Pretenders album, but apart from Pretenders 2, or if you do, it's quite expensive. And I sort of picked this up, and how much it is, and went over. And I didn't notice, but there was a, there was already a label that said it was a pound, and he said, because someone, it's got a pound on it, you'll have it. I don't think he was going to sell it for me for a pound. I think it might have been a fiver, but, you know, I was pleased with that. Um, yeah, I'm really stoked with that. Plays well. I think it's probably better than the debut album, actually. Um, like Adulterous Boys Got Spanked. Um, bad Boys Get Spanked, sorry. Message of Love. The singles Message of Love. I Go to Sleep. Talk of the Team. You've got Day After Day and then Louie Louie. It's just a great rocking album. I think it sort of reflects Peter Ridgewood's um, uh, 
because he's lying, he's going for, I think it's around this time she starts to sing, and she starts to sing Black Davis. Um, um, he's obviously he mentions him as being the adulterous. Uh, no, no, great album, really pleased to pick it. And finally, two little oddballs that I picked up. Reader's Digest box sets. Now, they tend to be like Jim Reeves and the like. And I managed to pick up a couple very cheaply. This one is the world greatest of the, 19, of the 50s and 60s. And basically, it's, well, it's a 10 disc set and a record set, but it's actually 11. There's a best of compilation. But each side features an artist. So you've got Bill Haley, Fats Domino, Tommy Steele, Platters, Pat Boone, Chuck Berry, Eddie Kaufman, Ledley, Ebony Brothers, Ronnie Donovan, Buddy Holly, Jerry Lee Lewis, Connie Francis, Mikey Wild, Sam Cooke, Flying Eddie, Anthony Mooney, Brenda Lee, Vivi Fury, Bobby V, Roy Orbison. There you go. The records are an absolute great nick. Nick. I, they play well. I think with box sets, because, because of the amount of records, you know, people don't tend to play the odd ones. They try and play it the old way through. You also got a free album in here with Jukebox Jive, which you've got on here. Um, Leader of the Pack, Shangri La's, and what else you got? Catch this Charlie Brown, Johnny Rotten is there. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm just, Johnny and the Hurricanes, Red River Rock. It's just a great, great old box set. Um, I will keep my eye out. Purely just, and they're all original recordings. I think the only time it changes is when you're on the, you're, you're on the jukebox live album. That's some some re-records. Here, it's a sense sensational seventies ten disc set. Uh, now it works. They do it for each year. So yeah, you've just, just been playing seventy to seventy one. About to play seventy two. You've got all sorts. He yeah, does right. He does right. You've got Black Knight on here. He finishes as Lena Martel's One Day at a Time. Possibly the worst, in my opinion, the worst record ever to get to number one. So yeah, I'm really pleased I found this. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's got a whole lot of this stuff. It ranges out there. But yeah, I, 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 could, I could go on. I'm really pleased with that. I'd say it cost it cost me pennies really, so that's my haul. Um, so I hope everything's well. I am now on forty subscribers, so that's really pleasing. Um, so yeah, just check who they are, new ones are, and then subscribe back. Enjoy your week. Uh, I might post post another video on. I have recorded a response to someone's video, but uh, I'll put that on when I see fit feel for see fit and ready so enjoy the rest of your weekend until the next time take care